today's subscriber question. I can't talk this morning. I think I need to have some more coffee. Oh. Or maybe not so much anymore. Maybe I've had too much. Um, today's subscriber question, once again, comes from Monique. She has, Monique Miller, she has asked some really great questions. And her most recent one is, would I supply or give her the measurements for the card fronts, for the focal image, and then all of the mats on the back? And I thought about that for the last couple of days and how best to do it. And it's it's a it's a big it's a big task that's beyond beyond me. However, never fear. There is there is an answer. I've mentioned this before. Operation Right Home. Um, go to type in your like Google or Bing or whoever you use as your search engine. Type in Operation Right Home card sketches. And then you'll see a link for Operation Right Home sketches. Click on that and it will take you directly to the page that has all of these these card sketches on it all of these ideas and what you do is you add your image your colors your you add your panache to them now you do not have to um, sign up for anything and swear that you're going to send cards off to the military whatever this is this is for anybody. I'm going to show you, for example, this sketch right here. Now you see the measurements? And uh, there are, on the Operation Right Home site, there are places that they teach coloring. they teach you how to how to do coloring things and yeah I'm not the best these are the pieces of my scrap that I have selected from my stash and I'm going to make this birthday card and this is operation right home uh, sketch number nine. This one here. Now I'm doing a couple of things different than what's on here. These are suggestions. This one just shows one layer across and this is the card front here. And this suggests that you put the sentiment down there and then maybe some kind of focal image there. Well I've chosen to use my sentiment up here and another piece of paper behind the sentiment which is pink polka dots to kind of mimic the black and white polka dots Well, I didn't get a very good do on my stamped image. It's faded out over there. So, hey, I got another side. Try to re-ink this, get it better. This is a giant pad. So I'm, I'm pressing really hard, trying to get better ink, and I'm trying to get the whole thing covered. It's 
So, one more. I hope this time I got it. All right, now I'll try and get this lined up. And I'm not totally centering it on this because I'm going to cut quite a bit of this away. I hope that's finally good enough. Okay, that's better. All right, that's better. Okay, so there's the back side. And here's the better one. And I'm not going to worry about that little is there because it'll probably be cut away. There might be a little bit left on it, but that's okay. Now, I have an assortment of Stampin' Up! markers. And these are old. Um, I don't know how many of these colors are still available. I know Old Olive is still available. But the rest of these colors, like Pixie Pink and Bravo Burgundy, I'm not sure of. But I'm going to color the cakes. All right, so now I've got this colored, and I'm going to cut this out now. All right, so with my paper trimmer, I am going to use this edge. I'm going to use this edge right here of this plastic business as my guide. So, this always has to be straight. It has to be no wonky whatever or you'll be kind of be in trouble. So slide that, I'm going to slide that under, and if you're using the sliding blade trimmer you're going to do about the same. I'm going to do one, I'm going to do one side using this and the other side using the sliding blade trimmer. All right. Now I have the tops of these cherry stems just almost at the edge. And this strawberry, the top of the strawberry is right there. The top of the strawberry is right there, and the tops of the cherries are right there. So I'm going to cut that away, and that leaves this margin at the top. All right, now let me get my sliding blade trimmer. All right, on this sliding blade trimmer, I'm going to use this guide right here. And I'm going to move these things this deal is in the way i'm going to i'm going to come down here where that that thing is not going to be in my way all right Okay, I have 
the bottoms of these cake stands lined up right underneath there and they all look kind of weird and bulged out and that's what I want. All right, so now I'll cut that. And there. All right, I'm gonna, that's a little, that's a little shredded. I know I have a straight cut here because I used my guillotine trimmer. So I'm going to put that up against there. Get that blade out of the way. And then I want the edge of this cake. Right in there. So there's... that one with all of the paper fuzz and now back to the little guillotine trimmer I have a straight edge here because I just cut it with that other trimmer so I'm going to slide this in and get this all the way over now this is going to be more narrow this is going to be more of a narrow cut than this side is because of the diff two different trimmers. Now, if I if I were really really super fussy about this, I, I used these two trimmers to show you how you use these features, how you use this and this to get your get your cuts made real close so I like this one I like this guillotine trimmer because I can get closer than I can with the other one and I get better I get better clean cuts. I don't have that jaggedy edge that I get from this. All right, we need to measure this piece here. All right, this is close enough to three and a half. Here's the three and a half mark, and we're one, about one sixteenth of an inch shorter. So three and a half. Now this was the size of this paper. Two, one and a half inches by five. That's what this paper was. Now we are making it three and a half By and see it's really close to one so three and a half by one all right this yellow piece is two by five we are going to cut it down to three and three-fourths by one and one-fourth. So, one and one-fourth by three and three-fourths. That's for this. All right. So there you go. That's it. These are now ready to be, this is ready to be adhered to this. Oh, trying to get those even is most of the time beyond me, but okay, it's on. All right, so now the next one we're going to work on is the black polka dot. No, let's, let's work on the dark pink. And that is two inches by five and a half inches, and we're not going to cut this down. All 
Instead, we're going to use the border punch. Alright, I've punched the border on this side. Now I'm going to turn it over and do the same on this side. Alright, so there's our punched border for that one piece. Alright, now this one and a half by five and a half, it will just fit in there. So you don't have to do anything to this one. And I'm going to try and get it so that it's evenly spaced in there. So this one I don't need to do anything to. Okay. Alright, there. I'm not going to fuss with it anymore. Okay. So there is that. And I really haven't had to do anything at all with that. Now, now I'm going to put this piece. Here's my card front. I'm going to get that ready. Alright, this diagram shows that it's below center. It's not directly centered. There's more space here than there is down there. Okay, so I'm going to put it on just a little below center. Just like that. And that looks crooked. Is that crooked? I bet you it probably is. Of course it is. All right. Become friends with your ruler. So what I did was I went to the one inch mark on my ruler. And then I butted that piece against my ruler and then pressed it down. So... so now it's even. Okay. All right. Now the next part, we're going to do this, this piece. Both of these will need to be cut down and you will be using your trimmer again. Not just to cut these pieces down, but to get this, this two inch by two inch piece at one and three fourths by one and three fourths. And I will probably end up putting some little rhinestone things down underneath there. This stamp set I'm using from Stampin' Up is called Well Scripted, and I don't think they have it anymore. And I'm going to use this Happy Birthday. Now I need to cut a smidge off of each side in order to get this two inch piece down to one and three-fourths inches. All right. I have put this at one, one and seven-eighths. And cut that off. Has a little narrow, it has a little narrow margin here. This one will probably be a little wider. So now I've cut half of the required width off. So now I'll put this, I'll line this up at one and three fourths. And cut that off. And so now I have two teeny borders on the side. And like this one here, where I have a large space down here at the bottom, I'm going to cut this top part at one and three fourths. Whoops, wrong side, wrong side. There it 
there. Now, this is 1 and 3 fourths by 1 and 3 fourths. Now, this piece, the 2 by 3, this one is going to be cut 2 inches by 2 inches. So, I just have to cut this at 2 inches. So, I'm going to try and get that centered on there. Alright, so there that is. Alright, now we are ready to put our our doohickey on here. And I'm going to put this so that there's just a tiny bit of the black polka dots showing. on that side, just like that. And yes, I am unquestionably the queen of crooked and I gave up a long time ago trying to be perfect. So now I'm going to raise this. So I'm going to put some little pop dot things on. And then I'm going to put that over at the side. And it kind of covers up a little bit of that cake, but that's okay. From I got these from Michael's in their dollar bin. And I'm going to use these, these three small green ones. All right. So there you go. Okay, so how did you like that tutorial on making a card front using your scraps? If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then please go ahead and feel free to do so. If you want to see more of these videos with uh, me using the exact sizes of everything that I'm using, then uh, leave a comment below. If you want more of this, let me know. And I will, I'll make them for you. You can always do the thing that you like the most. Ink the edges, scratch them up, and, and uh, distress them. Hey, you do for what you like. If you don't have punches like this, but you have lace, knock yourself out. Go do that. Okay. All right. This is Leslie from Message in a Fold saying... Get your scraps out. Bye.